This video and all of the images used are brought to you by Envado Elements. This isn't a regular video, because Envado gave me some of their stock images to use for this video. If you're not familiar with Envado, Envado Elements is a Photoshopper's must-have subscription filled to the brim with Photoshop actions, layer styles, brushes and over 50 million stock photos. Exciting, right? So, these are the images I got from them and I'm thrilled to see what I can make of these. As you know, I only have 60 minutes for these kind of challenges and honestly, I'm a bit scared because, well, as you can probably tell yourself, these images aren't exactly made for each other, but that makes it all the more interesting. So let's take a quick look at the rules. I have to use every single image I got. I can't add anything else to this selection. I can only use Photoshop and Camera Raw and I only have 60 minutes. So without any further ado, let's get this thing rolling. So, I started by throwing in the house. Directly after that I dropped in some of the rock images and positioned it to the place I thought looked best. At this point I already had an idea of what I was gonna make, as usual. It was gonna be some kind of underwater world with strange rocks and a house and a boat and you know. Anyway, within a mind I added my next rock image which I then immediately started to mask out with the pen tool which is incredibly stupid because I have only one hour to do everything. But yeah, I did it anyway. Anyway, once I finished I moved it to the right and after that I started masking out the other rock image with the pen tool because I suck. So then I added the last rock image and guess what? I masked it out, yes, the pen tool. Then I started moving it around, then I started moving it around and tried to turn it into some kind of gate along with the other rock. So I did some more masking and tweaking and used liquify to slightly change its shape. Then it seemed useful to mask out the house too since there's not really a sky underwater. So yeah, I did that. So once I finally finished cutting out the house, I added the boat, which I started cutting out too. So yeah, for the foreground this seemed good to me, so I decided to start on the background. I dropped in the shore image and transformed it a bit and then removed the sky. Then I copied it to the foreground to add some gravel and rocks to the foreground. Once I did this, I noticed that the rock on the foreground could be the connecting point of the left big orange brown rock. I masked it out so it would look better and tried to make everything blend in a bit with even more masks. Then I masked away parts of the big rock so they would look like one big mama rock in the end. So then I decided to add a background plain color which was gonna be the sea since the whole thing is pretty much underwater. I made the blue similar to the background images blue so they would blend together nicely. Then I used a soft brush to fade the edge of the background. Now I repeated what I did to the left side with gravel and rocks. I used a mask to make it more realistic and fitting. Then I also added a mask to the right rock since that was literally floating around. And then I was like, that background color is pure shit. So I changed it to a bit more brilliant blue and added a lighter one above it to create a brighter effect the closer you get to the surface. I was kinda happy with how that all looked so I started desaturating everything a bit because underwater everything loses a bit of color, you know. And besides, it's way easier to recolor everything once you make stuff that's underwater. I also started adding some exposure adjustment layers to the rocks since they were quite light and because the light source is coming from behind behind the rocks they should be pretty dark. I also added some light ones to create some rim light here and there. So yeah, that light adjusting went on for a while until I was finally satisfied, sort of.
Then I thought to myself, I don't see enough rocks, so let's add some more. I grabbed my previously used image and cut out some rocks I didn't use yet. Those I desaturated too, put them in the background and masked and color corrected them. It wasn't perfect, but good enough. From this point, real stuff was about to happen. I made a blue solid color and used that to make a nice underwater glow by setting its blend mode to linear dodge add. I painted softly on the bright water areas and that sure made it look a bit more realistic and underwaterish. Then I used the color balance adjustment layer to make sure everything looks even more blue and that improved the whole thing by quite a lot if you ask me. And this made me so excited that I immediately put the fish in. I used blend if to remove the bright blue background, this way only the fish stayed visible. I moved it around, copied it a few times and filled the background with happy fish. I even put some of them inside the house because, well, you know, that didn't look amazing but for now it was fine. I knew it wasn't gonna be a masterpiece anyway, so. I also put some fish in the foreground to have some more depth and stuff and even added a quick shadow to those. I increased the glow effect and decided it was time for some turtles. After I put in the first one I started cutting it out and later moving it around to see what fitted best. I copied it to put one in the background and the other one at the left, above the boat. It honestly took a while for me to get the colors right because it just didn't work out at all. But in the end I sort of managed to get it to look okay, I guess. And the second one came in and I repeated the same process for this one. Since I didn't have lots of time, I called it a day and decided to add a camera raw filter. I did my thing in there and I literally used the last few bloody minutes and yeah. So far, this was definitely my most stressful one, I'm not even gonna lie. And that's because I wanted to do so much and I just, it's so hard. I really had to choose what's important and what's not because I only have one hour. But I can also happily say that this is my favorite one I've done so far. I 100% did not expect it to go so well, so yeah. That's nice. So anyway, let's hear it from my favorite Instagram post on hashtag Benny Review, which is this time from Batir. I hope I did not pronounce that wrong. I'm amazed by how much detail you put in this. When you look at the stuff you used, literally everything is a separate image. That's insane. I don't think I could have done this better. Very, very good job. Want to see your edits on my favorite Instagram post? Make sure to tag hashtag Benny Review in your next post. See you soon. So that's it for today. If you like this video, make Make sure to leave a like and a comment and if you enjoy my overall content feel very very free to subscribe it would mean the world to me and i hope i'll see you in my next video